Get ready. Today is my first ever Manga Monday. Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm the average otaku, and today I wanted to talk about the manga Sakamoto Days. This is the first video in a series I'm calling Manga Mondays, where every Monday I pick a new manga to talk about. So Sakamoto Days is an extremely popular manga in Shonen Jump, written and illustrated by Yuto Suzuki. It started off as a one-shot which was released back in 2019, but eventually got serialized in Shonen Jump in November of 2020. It currently has 100 chapters out, with 5 chapters published in English with more on the way. So anyways, this manga follows Taro Sakamoto, who is considered the greatest hitman of all time. He was on top of the criminal underworld until one day he met a girl working at a convenience store and fell in love with her. He decided to throw away his life of crime so he could be with her. Now a few years later, Sakamoto has married her and has a child, works at and owns a convenience store with his wife, and has gained a substantial amount of weight. And even though Sakamoto is done with the underworld, it doesn't seem like the underworld is done with him. Many of his former partners and rivals don't believe he's truly out of the game and show up in the hopes of taking him out. Prohibited from killing from his wife, Sakamoto must find a way to get rid of these deadly foes and prevent them from harming his family, his store, and his small town. So I first wanted to talk about the obvious inspiration for this manga, which is John Wick. John Wick's story follows the same basic premise. John Wick is a legendary hitman who decides to throw it all away to marry the love of his life. He's done with the underworld, but the underworld isn't done with him, and he finds himself getting dragged back into it. So yeah, the basic premise for Sakamoto Days does copy John Wick, but they do both go in completely different directions. While John Wick is more tragic and gritty and more of a dark revenge story, Sakamoto Days goes in the opposite direction and is more of just a fun comedy. And that brings me to my thoughts on the story of the manga. I think it's fun, but ultimately forgettable. The manga is completely comedic in both its tone and its characters. The beginning of the manga have a bunch of different hitmen coming to kill Sakamoto and it can get kind of repetitive. There will always be a hitman that has like their own quirk that will come after Sakamoto and after Sakamoto defeats them they'll become friends. There does seem to be an overarching plot about a man killing all hitmen and him having a special connection to Sakamoto. I think the main issue is since this manga is comedic, there's not a lot of tension or suspense during the fights. There's not really any stakes at all, which I think can hurt the manga from time to time. Don't get me wrong though, I still did have fun with this manga. It's funny and has a fast paced story. It's definitely one of those manga where I'll forget about it for a while, but then read a few volumes at once. The next thing I wanted to talk about is the characters. We only have a few important characters right now, which is basically Sakamoto's family and his employees. We have Sakamoto, the main character, who we don't see talk a lot, but we do see his thoughts quite a bit. He's one of those characters that's pretty laid back and doesn't take things too seriously. Like a villain will be giving a monologue and Sakamoto will not be paying attention and just thinking about something completely random. Of course when the time comes he can be pretty It's pretty fun to see him use everyday items as weapons. Like we might see him use a fork to stop a bullet or throw a bouncy ball so hard it can actually damage an enemy. Nothing scares him or makes him nervous except making his wife angry. His wife is a fun enough character. Like I said, she's the only one who can scare Sakamoto. She's also the one that doesn't let him kill anyone, which leads to him having to find creative ways to kill the enemies. She doesn't have a big role, but seeing Sakamoto with her and their child is always sweet and heartwarming. We also have Sakamoto's two employees, Shin and Lu. Shin is a clairvoyant who really admires Sakamoto and is sent to kill him. After he's stopped by Sakamoto and sees the family life that he's trying to protect, he doesn't want to kill him anymore. One thing leads to another and he ends up working for Sakamoto at the convenience store. His clairvoyant abilities are actually pretty useful for his job. He can read people's minds and help them find something without them asking. He also communicates with Sakamoto mainly by reading his mind and having conversations in their head, just so Sakamoto's wife is unaware of the hitmen that are after them. I actually really like the mind reading element, I thought it would be a gimmick that would get less and less used, but the author always manages to incorporate it throughout the story. We also have Lu, who used to be a member of the Chinese triad. She gets saved by Sakamoto and Shin and also ends up working at the convenience store. She's skilled at fighting and is also aware of Sakamoto and Shin's abilities and skills. Shin and Lu get very close to the Sakamoto's and they make kind of this makeshift family. Shin and Lu also don't just help around the store, they also help Sakamoto get rid of all the hitmen after him. They all care very deeply for each other and their family dynamic is honestly really wholesome. We also have a group of top hitmen called The Order, which Sakamoto used to be a part of. We're slowly getting introduced to all the members and it seems like they'll be reoccurring characters. And finally we have our antagonists, which are usually just there for a couple of chapters and then we never see them again. They're fine, they do have some pretty cool abilities from time to time, like there's one with an invisibility cloak and there's another one that's genetically modified. There also seems to be a main antagonist, but at this moment in time I don't really know a lot about them. Finally I wanted to talk about the art, which I don't really have much to say about. It's good. The action scenes are nice and I like the character designs a lot. I don't really have any complaints there. 
Overall, I think Sakamoto Days is a fun manga to read, but it's not anything special. Like, don't go in expecting something similar to Spy Family. It's a little bit more generic, but it's still a good action comedy. It's definitely not something you need to prioritize in your reading list, but if you have the time, it's a fun enough read. I'm enjoying it, and I'll definitely continue to read it. Well, that's pretty much it for my video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments what you think about the manga. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you and bye.